it's been a hell of a day. I'm here at the hotel, the Omni, for Rhode Island Comic Con. Got an upgrade. I'm here on the 20th floor. So we're gonna see what this upgrade entails. Room 2004. I guess 20 for 20th floor. Yeah, I'm up there. Here we go. Let's see. Not bad. I had a bigger room last year. Oh, cool. So there's my view of, I guess that's the capital. That's pretty neat. All right, this ain't bad. What is that? for a bottle of water. No oh, thanks. Well, something kind of neat though is apparently if I fill out this door knocker and leave it outside by two o'clock in the morning, they'll bring me a free drink in the morning. Huh, that's cool. Got Comic-Con keys. I'm gonna have to haul my crap a long way. It was a fucking trip getting here, I tell you. Come here, this is my room. An upgraded room with a view, just for me. I forgot I haven't shown the bathroom yet. What throne was bestowed upon this king? Ooh. It's got one of those in mirror lights, which I like. Pretty standard hotel bathroom, to be completely honest. I think the one that I stayed in uh, in New York, not the not the pod, the one before that, was nicer than this. But again, it's not bad. Got some nice twisty art to look at while it's going on. Turlet. It's a room. It sure is a room. It's a hell of a drive. I left home at 1 p.m. Made excellent time considering the rain. I hit the Boston area around 4 o'clock. My car is my first time using the built-in sat-nav in my Genesis Coupe, and it detects traffic and decides to put me on a detour. It gets me off the interstate and driving through the fucking suburbs around Boston. It took me two hours to go four miles. So I should have gotten here at five. I got here at seven. And then when I finally got to the hotel, after getting through all that traffic, all those back roads and everything, I actually ended up having to open Google Maps on my phone, and then I had those both running at the same time competing with one another until my car, I, I followed the Google directions, and my car finally got the, got the hint, and we got on that route. I arrived, I overshot the exit, I've done that before, not a big deal, so I got turned around, I missed another turn, so I pulled a U-turn, missed another turn, so I had to go through a loop, drove past the hotel, missed the entrance to the garage, ended up back on the interstate again. Had to do the exact same detour I did the first time, drove past the hotel again, and got back on the interstate again. I lost count of the number of times that I drove past. I ended up getting here, finally. It's like 7.30, I'm finally in my room. Now I'm here in the restaurant in the hotel, because I am exhausted from all that driving. We're just going to eat. 
That's Halloween then. Well, does this count as day one or is this day zero? I guess we're gonna call it day zero. Yeah, it's not important. It took way longer than it was supposed to to get here. Uh, but yeah, I'm here. I had a pretty awesome dinner. I just had a glass of scotch. <sighs> day one of the con is tomorrow. Fridays are half days. I know I got that a little confused last year, but they're half days, so I can sleep in and take my time and probably do a simple costume tomorrow. It's going to be a huge, huge bonus and advantage staying at the convention hotel as opposed to any distance off-site. It means that I can come and go as I please and... I can change costumes midday if I want. I don't have to be dressed up all day as well. It's kind of weird. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the fact that I've got that view of the city out the window, but I keep feeling like I'm in New York, not Providence. Uh, I've been to New York twice since I've last been to Providence. Maybe that has something to do with it. New York would have been a lot easier to get to, in all honesty. 45 minutes on a plane and I'm there. Seven hours in a car. <sighs> Vacation. That's all I ever wanted. I hope I run into somebody I know this year. I don't think I know anybody coming to the con this year. So this will be interesting. Yeah, I don't know. We'll figure it out. What am I going to do about the whole 
food situation because ideally what I wanted to do was park my car last night and then not drive anywhere again until I'm going home on Sunday. But I didn't think that left me open to a lot of options, so, which is why I ate in a uh, restaurant downstairs last night and spent a pretty penny to do so as cheaply as possible. So I'm not going to do that every day. But I realized something upon daybreak and being able to see what exists outside my room. I'll take a look at this. That sky bridge goes over to this building. I went to that CVS last night to get some drinks and stuff. But this building, why that is the gigantic Providence Mall. And round about there, I'm guessing, is the Providence Mall Food Court. Not exactly the healthiest option, but when you're trying to, at the last minute, stick to some sort of a budget, I mean, I'm paying out the ass for this trip, but you know, it's just for me, so whatever. That's the way to go. I could leave my room, walk to Taco Bell, and walk back, and never go outside. I imagine this is what it would be like living on Mars. You get a lot of windows, a lot of sky bridges, but you never go outside. And somewhere in the middle, we can survive. All right, so the con has officially opened. It's after four o'clock. So I need to figure out what exactly I'm gonna do. There's not a whole lot to do, being opening day. Uh, most of the big stuff is tomorrow. So I'm not gonna go too hard today. There's really no reason to. There is a Robert England panel tonight that I think is going to be my big thing for today. Around the time that ends, there's another panel with a couple of podcasters and Brian O'Halloran, who is Dante and Clerks, and then there's the After Party Part Uno. But that's three things. Do I really want to do three things? Mm, decisions, decisions. The problem is choice. Alright, we're about to head out, go see the Robert England panel. Got my associate Donnie with me. Go see what this is all about. Rhode Island Comic Con 2019. Our hero, Dante Hicks, wakes up in what looks to be a pile of garbage. It looks like the clerk's logo from the last page fell on top of the pile. <laughs> Shirts and pants. Clearly. Dante answers the phone. Hello? No, I don't have to work today. And uh, according to this drawing, I uh, just woke up inside an elevator. <laughs> Dante has been called into work on his day off. In this next panel, Dante has arrived at work and is disappointed to see that the lock has grown an unsightly goatee. <laughs> it's gum. It's clearly gum. Next. Wow, it's the Quick Stop, a historic location in independent film depicted here in all its glory. I'll give you a second to take in its beauty. <laughs> In our version, the owners were still saving up for a normal-sized stop sign, so for now, a minuscule stop sign will have to do. It elicits lots of squinting from people driving by. And finally, the handwritten sign we all know and love, I assure you, we're OPAD. It's hard to make ends. Next. In the top left here, we see Dante working at the quick stop. Here your cigarettes, sir. Dante nervously tried to avoid mentioning the customer's deformed and mutant arm. <laughs> in this next panel, Dante was trying to display his own deformed and mutant arm and show us all here. <laughs> but just then, a businessman stepped in. Hey, how long have you been a smoker? The businessman asked the customer. The man's innocent questioning soon turned into a frenzied tirade against cigarettes. Look at this drawing of black testicles I made. <laughs> the crowd became enraged. Dante was shocked and aroused. Uh, strike aroused. <laughs> Next. <laughs> uh, my sentiments exactly, sir. <laughs> we cut to outside the quick stop. Here on the left, with his signature pot on the head, we apparently have Johnny Appleseed. <laughs> on the right, Neo from The Matrix. <laughs> 
<laughs> his mouth and chin have been viciously stung by a thousand bees. <laughs> Wait a minute, that's not Johnny Appleseed and Neo. That's Jay and Silent Bob. Jay went with a short black soccer mom haircut in my version, and he's being played by one of those bendable action figures. <laughs> Silent Bob has a nasty grimace and looks like a disturbing frog puppet. <laughs> Jay spoke up in his typical manner. Hello, dear young lass, he called to a woman off screen. Hast thou ever been gently embraced by a plus-sized nobleman in a trenchant coat? <laughs> At this point in time, I'd like to remind the audience that this is my version of the story, Brad's story, and I'll tell it however I want. Next. We cut back inside to see the crowd is turned on poor Dante. They throw their cigarettes at him and chant, Cancer Merchant, Cancer Merchant. Uh, just uh, my editorial observation. Did anyone else see Silent Bob as the doctor from The Simpsons? <laughs> <laughs> thank, you. thank you, sir. I'm not the only one. That was a good call. He missed that. Yeah. <laughs> Stop throwing your cigarettes at me, especially you, the tall man in the wife beater with the tiny pigtails. <laughs> Whoosh, a white cloud fills the room. Interesting fact, Whoosh was my mother's maiden name. I could have been Bradley Whoosh Esquire MD. Anyway, Whoosh, a white cloud filled the room. The crowd dispersed, and Veronica stood there, Dante's girlfriend. In this version, she's severely cross-eyed. She only has one finger, and she's holding a penguin by its beak. This deranged individual frightened Dante. His hair stood straight up on his head. Veronica said, who's leading this mob? Let's see some credentials. The man is holding a Chewley's gum branded briefcase, I guess? Veronica says, and you're stirring up all this anti-smoking sentiment to what? Sell more gum? Get out of here. The man with a clinically tiny head scampered away. <laughs> he later died of compacted brain syndrome. Next. Quack, quack, says the penguin. Wait, did you mean me or Veronica? Either way, it's 37. <laughs> Next. 37? Don't joke, don't joke my fucking line, motherfucker. <laughs> Dante was shocked at the number, but just at that moment, although it looks like Veronica is holding up the store and demanding all the money. Like <laughs> nope, Dante was just surprised and upset. They argued and Veronica stormed off to school. Next door, at RSD Video, Randall arrived late to open the video store. He was extremely aloof and had stolen Johnny Appleseed's hat from earlier. <laughs> An angry woman was waiting for him. She was eyeing the fire axe attached to the front of the door, wondering if she should break in. <laughs> Randall arrived just in time with his signature Freddy Krueger glove to slash his way into the front of the store. <laughs> the key ring. Next. Randall walked next door to talk to his best friend, Dante. Hey, Randall. Just reading the newest copy of Asian Design Major Weekly? Apparently I am, Randall replied. You know, my ex-girlfriend Caitlin called me last night. Ooh, did you tell Veronica? One fight a day with Veronica's better luck and stomach thing. She wants me to leave here and go back to school and get some direction. I'm going to offer you some advice, my friend. Let the past be the past. Forget Caitlin Bree. She cheated on you how many times? Eight and a half. I would never cheat on you, Brian O'Halloran, I thought to myself. <laughs> Realizing Brad wasn't really reading from the script. <laughs> what did you say, Brad? <laughs> Stick to the script. Caitlin Bree was vile to you. Stuff clean, stuff gargling naked stuff. Stuff, stuff screen, stuffing in a sock. Stuff on Eileen. Huge black stuff with pearly white stuff. Stuff it up my two loose stuff. Stuff blasters in outer space. Stuff jobs by Betsy. Sucking stuff and stuff. Finger my stuff, play with my stuff, three on the stuff, girls who crave stuff, girls who crave other stuff, men alone too, the stuff connection, pink stuffy lips, and all stuff filled with hard stuff. Oh, and happy scrappy the hero stuff. <laughs> Am I the only one here who figured they'd just watch Clerks on TBS? <laughs> no, I not exactly what like TBS does, but like The Godfather and Casino. Yippee ki yay, Bill Farmer. <laughs> Totally sell the script to TBS. They totally could read that. <laughs> a bushel of papers, my good sir. Tis time to unwind, consume some, some ale, and inhale some cannabis. Did mine eyes betray me, or didst I see Caitlin Bree in the courtyard? Yeah, that's my girl, ex-girlfriend. We were going to start dating again. Jay shook his head and declared, Poppycock, thou hast a curt lover. She brought you lasagna, a delicacy from the Mediterranean. 
And didn't she change the wheel on your carriage? What is thy plan? Whilst thou breaketh thine courtship? Maybe. <laughs> As noble Jay shook his head and walked away, Hush and Bob turned back to Dante and said, There's a million fine loving women in the world, but they don't all bring you lasagna at work. Most of them just cheat on you. I was playing Silent Bob the whole time, get it? <laughs> <laughs> He's right. <laughs> On the, uh, next. On the left here, unbeknownst to Dante, Veronica was next door at the video store talking to Randall. Veronica was already upset because her left leg was suffering from that skin-eating bacteria virus. <laughs> she could barely support her own weight on her twig-like limb. But Randall had even worse news for her. Dante was leaving her to be with Caitlin. And Adi best friends? <laughs> Dated briefly and sadly broke up. <laughs> but something tells me that maybe, just maybe, you'll see their romance rekindled in Clark Street. <laughs> <laughs> Judger of fucking time and scripts. We fucking <laughs> wow, dude. No wonder you don't have dates. You flew through that fucking thing. <laughs> right, a couple of panels down. Pretty good first day. Back in the room now. <clears throat> about 45 minutes or so. Make sure that thing's closed until the after party starts more like half an hour so yeah cool I didn't think I was gonna do all those all those things I did two things yeah not too shabby Donnie kept his mouth shut he stayed in his element yeah pretty good pretty good the thing I like about the first day is there's so many fewer people, you can really walk around, get a feel for how the thing operates. Because tomorrow is a nightmare. Saturday's always a nightmare at this con in terms of just sheer number and volume of people. So, I know where I'm going to be going, I know where I'm, I can avoid, and it's going to be nice. A part one of the after party, it's specifically Halloween related. I think we're gonna, we're gonna stick with Walter Sobchik for this evening and my associate Donnie, where the fuck he is. Uh, we're gonna go check it out. Could be a long night, could be a short night. Huh? to learn this in gym class like I did. I still have those scars. That's fine. I'm having Macarena flashbacks to grade school. <laughs> Get the 
order a cereal, I would say Cheerios. You'd say Cinnamon Toast Crunch, then I'd say Honey Nut Cheerios. Back and forth, if you were beating me, the category is Gen 1 Pokemon, okay? Gen 1! Squirtle! Charmin! Bulbasaur! Pikachu! Don't help her! Aside from just the geographical differences, or the fact that, you know, as of the first of this year, I gave up drinking beer. And an interesting thing about 
what this con so far is I'm realizing just how much I'm presented with the option of ordering a beer. Oh god, Don, you are so heavy. Oh god. Dancing with that thing for two hours. <sighs> Donnie, you're out of your home. And I have coffee spilled on my arm. That is pure Colombian Donnie spilled all over my arm. Oh, my throat hurts. I hooted and hollered way too much. It's currently 1.06. Oh, this was day one. I feel like I've been here for a couple of days already. Jesus. I'm tired. I wore myself out dancing, which is something I rarely ever do. I got out there and I bumped butts with Jessica Rabbit and, you know, it was whatever. And that's the thing I need to put into my head. In, in this sort of thing, I'm not out there as me. I'm out there as Walter Sobchik. If I'm me, I can't do it. But if I'm a character, I can have a fucking ball. That's really what I discovered in acting when I started doing it. It's just, I can do all those things. I can be that person that I wish I could be. But if I put that, that asterisk in there of, this isn't me. This is Walter Sobchik. This is, insert character here. I can be anything. I can go out there. I cannot give a shit. I can dance, I can have fun. And that's the compromise that I'm willing to make with myself. I can't go out there and be Eric and dance and have fun. I just can't. I think being a character is a fair compromise. It's quarter past one. We have the full day of Comic-Con coming up in a few short hours. That's gonna be my big day, even though today felt massive. So I will see you in the morning for day two of Rhode Island Comic Con. Free day out there. Wow. That ball is reflective. Alright, day two, big day here at the old Rhode Island Comic Con. Plan for today is hop on over to that mall to get ourselves some reasonably, by convention standards, reasonably priced eats. Then back here to suit up for our big cosplay day. We're pulling the Mad Titan Thanos out today, people. But with a twist over my previous incarnations, which I think is gonna make my life a lot easier. Ugh, I hooted and hollered during the after party a lot, and you can hear that in my voice. Oh yeah. <laughs> Get to it. Morning. Morning. Morning, Bean. Morning. So I haven't been able to film much today. That's the downside to this Thanos costume, is this head to toe onesie I wear just to get myself purple arms is uh, doesn't exactly work with uh, the phone all that well. It's kind of a nightmare so I end up just it's an opportunity to, to disconnect at least so that's pretty cool. It was nice to not go through and do all the makeup. I still do prefer the overall look using the makeup. Uh, but the mask is alright. 
it's not all that hot. I mean, it doesn't breathe and it gets sweaty in there, but it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And it fits pretty well to not obstruct my vision. I honestly like the mask more than the shoes that I'm wearing. Because I am rocking big ol' boots to uh, make myself taller because Thanos is a titan and titans are huge. These make me about six foot six, so not winning any contests, but you know, I'm still taller than I would be otherwise, so it's fun. I guess to take a lot of pictures and um, like the really little kids, like you know, six and seven year olds, they really liked it. So that was cool. Except for squatting down to actually take pictures with them, my quads hurt so much. Sitting in the the banquet chairs for the panels that I went to today, the angle that I'm at is just, it kills my knees. Oh, I went to the William Shatner panel. Uh, that was pretty amazing. I think he's one of three surviving original cast members from Star Trek. He's in his 80s. Like, I, when am I going to get the chance to do that again? So I did. And it was really weird. Like, he was fired up. He had a ridiculous amount of energy, but he kind of, like, he kind of steamrolled over the people that were asking him questions. So, I don't know. The back of the VIP line. Um, and was able to just scoot right in. And that panel was for Elijah Wood. And that was, that was interesting. He's a, he's a neat character. Um, very humble, very, very soft-spoken, and just seems like an all-around good dude. All things said, this is my fourth year at this con. And I feel like it might be played out for me. I'm also wondering, like, do I want to do this again next year? Maybe it's time to do something new. I got two or three hours to kill before the after party to try and hydrate myself and put all this back on to go check out the after party. So they had this weird Hawaiian luau theme for this, this second after party and it really made no sense. They blew up a couple of beach balls and a few people were wearing plastic lays and that was literally it. Same music, a lot of the same playlist in slightly different order and a lot of the same people. Kylo Ren was there again, same costume. Um, Brian O'Halloran was kicking around. He, you know, hyped the crowd on the mic for some of it. And, you know, just walking around talking to people. I was taking a break with my mask off, and um, he comes out and says, Hey, man, you gotta keep hydrated. And I'm like, Thanks, Dante. I gotta do something about the hands. That's really the big thing. I can't use my phone, I can't hold on to anything. And it makes going into my wallet or anything just impossible. Even if I just cut the top knuckle of them off, you'd never see it. So, tomorrow's checkout day, and I. Uh, why did I bring so much stuff? So much of it I didn't even touch. Two bags worth of stuff I didn't even touch. Uh, but I gotta get out of this thing. My back is totally sweaty. And and get stuff packed up and uh, all right well i'm gonna sort this out on my own time and go from there this has been day two. Oh man yep crotch right into the camera like a professional all right it's sunday Last day of the con. Oh, I'm gonna bring this stuff to the car and then I'm gonna check out. And then, I'm, honestly, I'm probably not gonna stay too long. Cause I've walked around and I've seen it. It's pretty much it, it's a gorgeous day. Probably be better to get back to Vermont sooner rather than later. Or uh, 
we're going to be the hawk, Hawkeye. By not having this vest in my suitcase, I was able to fit the Star-Lord jacket in there, and the Star-Lord jacket is the only part of that costume that I brought. So it made more sense to me to be able to pack that one away. And with this one, I also brought my leather trench coat in case I wanted to wear this costume, so this is stuff that I didn't have to cram in the suitcase. So I'm able to wear it, and then I can just take it off in the car. I'm wearing a normal shirt under, underneath. All right, I'm gonna head on out, and I'll probably do a final statement. My God, they found me. They know Hawkeye's a fugitive from S.H.I.E.L.D. I better get out of here. Like, I try not to. I know tons of people, and I know when, who's an asshole and who's a great person, and I just refuse to judge people's work based on their personalities. So, we can... So, what I want to say, so you're not wrong, I mean, I don't think you're wrong, but I have to say, like, you know, for all of the talk about Vincent Gallo and everything, he's he's an, he's a good, he's an incredible artist. I mean, I did I did really enjoy the movie at the end of the day. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, you were great. Thank you. I, I mean, that cast, my God. Yeah, uh, and I do appreciate you caring that that he was not nice to me when we were shooting. But you know what? It's work. So would you still you know recommend people see it or would you? Totally. I mean, it's one of the movies I'm most proud of. Um, it's the kind of movie I would have wanted to see at that time, you know. Um, and I do think that Vincent is a genius. He might be whatever else he is, but he, you know, I do think that that movie is pretty amazing. Thank you. Thank you.
well, I walked back and I wasn't shaking. I was like, okay, I'm ready. And Ben comes out from behind his little podium that he had. He walks up and goes, give me the script. And I hand him the script. And when he turned around, I really thought I had offended Ben Burr to the point where he's going to be like, we're done. Get out of here, weirdo. But instead, he turned around and said, you know what you just did over there? And I said, laughing and cackling. And he said, yeah, I have a creature that that is going to be perfect for. Forget Admiral Admiral. That's it. There's still more to the con, but, you know, I'm done. I've been here for days. It's time to go home. It's a pretty good way to end it, though. Ooh, wearing these purple lenses for <laughs> a bit too long. Everything's yellow now. So I did a little more than I expected I was going to do on the final day, day three of the Comic-Con. Uh, I did three panels today. Today was uh, Christina Ricci, which was, she's wonderful. It was, it was a great panel. Followed up by George Takei, which I didn't even think I was going to go to, and then I found myself in a position where I could just walk right in and yeah, George Takei. He talked a lot about the Japanese internment that he went through when he was five years old and you know, a lot of, uh, and how in a lot of ways it's happening again down on the Southern border. And it was, it was, it was a lot of fun too. Like there was levity to it, but you know, he, he's using his life experience to try to raise awareness as to what, the hell's actually going on so that was great george is wonderful took a bit of a break walked around bought myself some more exotic animal jerky i need to finally start my series eric don't eat that like legitimately because i have all this stuff that is weird but it's food and we're gonna we're gonna give that a whirl and decided to stick it out for one more panel and i'm glad i did this panel was a star wars panel um which had the actors behind Chewbacca, Admiral Akbar, uh, Salacious Crum, and Nine Nub. You know, the actors and voice actors and puppeteers and uh, the four of them just talking about what it was like working on the working on Star Wars back in the day and what it's like working on it now and you know, just a lot of cool, insightful stuff. It's been long, it's been fun, it's been exhausting. But you know, it's done. I don't need to stay till the bitter end. Uh, I think I stayed longer than I intended. But this has been it. Rhode Island Comic Con 2019 in the bag. And I'll see you next time. Home. Home.